becomes a little bit more entertaining because you need to note what am I feeling, what is the average, and then you have to interpolate whether, you know, what, what is the difference between the two. I, I call it the third vector. You know, so you're trying to figure out what the third vector is, where the, the average wind is the first vector, what you're actually feeling is the second vector, and you have to infer what that third vector is. Oh. Uh, charts are out of order. We don't like that. <clears throat> we'll come back to that one. No, I step one more. So, <clears throat> what you're looking for is uh, kind of talk to this one. There's no no wind at all. You've just got a certain amount of wind blowing, and so you think of this as a velocity, and then add a thermal to it, which is just pulling air in. And so what you end up feeling around the thermal is the summation of that plus that. So if you were standing upwind of the thermal, what you feel is the average wind plus the air that's getting pulled into the thermal. So if you're upwind of the thermal, i.e. the thermal just passed, you feel a big rush of wind blowing down wind. Or alternately, as the thermal is coming towards you, from upwind, and it's just upwind of you, you feel the wind almost stop, and sometimes even reverse. So <clears throat> what you're feeling is, is uh, the green vector, <clears throat> and the average wind is the blue vector, and what you're really trying to figure out is this yellow vector, because that's the, <clears throat> what's <clears throat> the, uh, what the thermal influence is on the wind, and <clears throat> what, so, if you're to one side of the thermal, the average wind, this is what you're feeling. What you're trying to understand is, okay, I feel the wind. <clears throat> I feel the wind. I know the average wind. What is the difference between the two? So it's vector math. And that third vector is always pointing straight towards the thermal. It's, and so <clears throat> this is, if you get nothing else from tonight, <clears throat> this is the most important thing. <clears throat> and uh, then, so this is like the freshman uh, aspect of reading air. Then the sophomore one is you can start telling how far away the thermal is and how strong the thermal is by the rate of change. So a little thermal as it passes by only affects you for a very short period of time because it's only pulling air in from a very small distance away. So the wind's changing fairly quickly. You can use that rate of change to understand that the thermal is small and close by, whereas a big thermal is pulling air from a long distance away, so the change is much more gradual. So it might take a couple of minutes for the wind change to happen for a big thermal. That's kind of <clears throat> and so you can use the rate of change of what you're feeling to understand <clears throat> the, uh, how big it is and how far away it is. Now, of course, a small thermal part of it will have a fear. Joe, this. During practice, how do you translate what is the theory to actually test yourself if you succeeded on finding the third rate? What is the practice? They practice to do it. I'm just out there sampling. So I'm always, you no, know, no. Make, I'm, you know, I'm an engineer, so I make a hypothesis, and then I go test my hypothesis. So it's like, yeah, I'm feeling the arrow down over there and fly. And, oh, whoops, I was a little off. It's over here. Or, so I'm always just going out there and testing. And in practice, I do a lot of walking, because I'm doing the, I'm testing sometimes unlikely. No, I, I'm not really confident in this error, but I'll, this call, I'll go test. So, I'm, <clears throat> in practice, I do a lot of walking. <laughs> but the, <clears throat> the process of testing, validating, or invalidating your theory, you end up being able to adjust what your rules are. So, <clears throat> you know, so it's always test, 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 test. And the more data that you're collecting, the better you are at evolving. What, what, where is the third day? 
And the hardest part is most people tend to use the actual wind rather than inferring. Because when the thermal is just the one side of you, the, the wind is picked up already because you're taking the, the average wind plus the wind that's to one side, so you're feeling this, you know, you're feeling the wind already picked up and moved over, so they're thinking it's downwind, and whereas it's just the one side. So <clears throat> most people end up using a little bit more of the green vector rather than the yellow vector. So <clears throat> it, it's good to understand that <clears throat> to go out there and test, test, test. But yeah, I, I do a lot of uh, let's go, let's just go play. And you know, once I climbed up a, a little bit in the thermal with you know, assuming F3K, okay, where's my next thermal? And, uh, it's, yeah, it's over there. Go zoom over. Was I right? No. And how do you do it while you within a thermal? While flying and thermaling with your F3K model, you during the flight sense the wind around you and make the calculation where the next thermal might be. Exactly. So, and, uh, and, and it's not only what you're feeling, it's what you see on flags and trees and so on the grass. While flying, you also always cruise around with your eyes to see signs during thermaling. Yes. And I. <clears throat> I'm always cognizant of what I'm feeling, and it, it's it's not conscious. A lot of it, uh, the uh, you know, the little reptilian hindbrain is doing this integration of what is the average wind and what has been going on, and it's below conscious thought. I just I just know that I'm going to be over there. <coughs> and, uh, I, I I figured a lot of this out as a teenager, but. Uh, <coughs> I had to get, put my engineering hat on to figure out how did I know that. And so the engineer me figured out uh, the, the science behind it, whereas uh, it's really an intuitive art. Uh, for me, the essence is the intuitive art, and if I actually try and think about it, uh, my validity decreases. <coughs> so. It's not for men. This uh, hmm? <laughs> woman will be better. <laughs> so yeah. There you go. Well, as long as they don't have to talk. I'm sure not. And uh, I'll actually go forward a couple of slides, and then we're going to come back to the previous slide. That's <laughs> good. What goes on in the wind? Uh, one of the un annoyances is that when the wind gets up to a certain strength, it starts mixing the air up too much such that you don't get as much temperature gradients. So if the wind's strong enough, then there's no thermals because the air get, gets mixed up so much that uh, there's no warm air to rise. Uh, and in medium air, you, you end up getting thermals that break up more easily and fall apart. Uh, talk a little bit about the change in wind strength and altitude changes the character of the thermals. Uh, and I also mentioned like, the, the thermal in the wind, you know, the wind's drifting at this speed uh, near the ground at altitudes, but even more fast. So the thermal that's drifting with the uh, wind comes up and then gets pushed over and then eventually you're circling in that patch of air and it falls off the backside and <clears throat> the, you get a new blob that starts up wind. So the thermal continually gets, you know, the top gets knocked off. So <clears throat> when there's enough wind, what ends up happening is you know, that thermal gets the top sheared off and then uh, <clears throat> you end up getting eventually the air organizes into corridors where you get a row of thermals and the air gets pulled into the side. And if you take a cross section of that, 
that the stylized thing is that you get uh, <coughs> a, a row of sink and a row of lift. Uh, <coughs> so you end up wanting to fly to find that corridor point into the wind, surf it, and then wait for a good blob you can take. It. But, but be aware that the top keeps getting knocked off. Uh, now I'm going to back up a bit. Uh, I backed up too far. <coughs> now we're going <coughs> to talk about a lot of what, you know, using what I feel for uh, understanding what that third vector is. But another thing to really be important, uh, you know, what you're really looking for is where is the air converging on the field? Because the, the Again, if a thermal is in the middle of the field and there's no wind, all the flags point towards the center of the field, which means the air is converging on that thermal. So what you want to do is, okay, if you've got two flags up when you see them start pointing towards each other, you know that somewhere in the middle you know, is air that's going up. Or, so you end up wanting to look for where is the air converging anywhere in the field. And you can use a whole bunch of different things, not just what you feel. You can use what you see on trees, what you see on bushes, flags here and there. I mean, the free flight guys with the cattails, they look for the wind drift and all that. <coughs> but so you have different style of uh, signals that you're looking at. The most obvious thing is you're seeing stuff going up. You know, an airplane going up is a pretty obvious sign that there's lift there. <laughs> so that's a, that's a high priority. For me, uh, you know, what I'm feeling is actually number three, you know, the ground.